Some of you might recognize these wise words. You reap what you sow. So if you need, you must plant. If you want to find, you must search to find. Finding is reserved for those who can search and seize opportunity. Success is an active adventure. You all know how much I share on the value of feeding our minds. Feeding our minds with positive thoughts. That's great. Absolutely. Great, of course. However, along with positive thoughts, I am an enormous believer that we must take inspired action to reap rewards. Inspired action is the best. And when you get it, oh, you know. Build the proper habits now and you'll be a lifelong learner where the inspiration flows. That is what this podcast is all about, and today's episode will be just that. Being content and happy in the present while pursuing your future wants, desires, with inspired action. Welcome to the L Daily Podcast, aka the EDP. On the L Daily Podcast, we talk about all things that inspire and elevate our lives. I'm your host, Ellen Roars, and you can call me L. Oh my gosh, I'm getting that... Paul Simon chant, the jingle, the song, if you be my bodyguard, I can be your long lost pal, I can call you Betty, Betty when you call me, you can call me out, I can't remember, I, I know the tune is off, and if you are still here after that little episode or jingle, thank you, thank you very much. In all seriousness, though, as I mentioned yesterday, I am still figuring out the days that I plan to post uh, the pad, the podcast, you know, what days make most sense. Let me know if you have an idea what makes most, most sense to you. You're hearing uh, more from me this week because I have a little bit more downtime and I am practicing to get good at this. So most days it'll be just you and I, like today. And on those days, we'll review an inspirational quote, affirmation, and have a discussion to follow. Then my absolute favorite part, and I'm excited because I've been reaching out to inspirational folks already, uh, but I will have a monthly, even maybe two a month, we'll see, inspirational guest on to interview. And as I introduce them, you will know exactly why they inspire me and how they will inspire you. So with that, the quote of the day comes from Jim Rowan. You may have noticed within my intro, he was the one I kind of brought up, so Here it is. Learn how to be happy with what you have while you pursue all that you want. Learn how to be happy with what you have while you pursue all that you want. Jim Rohn. I admire this quote because it reminds us to enjoy the journey. One of my old managers used to say that. The joy is in the journey. So in order to reap, we must plant. But it's not always as simple as just planting. Most often, before we plant, we must prepare. Get it to the land. Dig the soil. Then you plant. But then you're watering, you're weeding, you have that patience to have to nurture and really take care of it. So if you need, you must plant. So what do you need? Our dreams don't just fall right into our laps, right? Sometimes I wish it was that easy. And I said it earlier, in order to succeed, it takes more than positive thinking and motivation. We have to dig deep, roll up our sleeves, do the work, and become a lifelong learner. And that is, that's the fun of it, right? Make a, a clear path for yourself. Then, maybe once that happens, all of a sudden, a good idea will interrupt your mind and you can take that inspired action. So, what if you're wanting to find something? Finding, I said it earlier, finding is reserved for those who search. All you need, you can find if you search. So, what you move to, it will move toward you. It's kind of cool. It happens to me all the time. If I'm looking for something, all of a sudden it pops up. So, going back to that flower garden analogy... You are the benefactor of the beauty. You know, you planted the seeds and it all of a sudden is there. So life does want to respond to the benefactor. I think of it in sales often. My current job is a long sales cycle, one of the longest I've ever had for something I've sold. And you have to build a lot of, you know, trust, rapport. Sometimes it's six months, sometimes it's even a year or longer before we get a sale. Um, And by that time, I think my clients are like, oh my gosh, you... You need to win this because you have been with me through the long haul, right? So it's why many of us stay loyal to our barbers, our hairstylists, our travel partners. I know for me, I am stuck to Delta and Marriott for life. Um, They just bring me joy, right? So today's affirmation is that I am confident knowing that I provide value to others. And you do, no matter how big or small the action is. So going to your stylist, your barber, they are the benefactor 
of you and you are the benefactor of them. So what are you planning to plant and research? It takes discipline to plant and to search. And this discipline, they all affect each other. The greatest gift of discipline is self-esteem. I know for me, discipline sure builds my confidence and my esteem. And when I neglect it, that discipline, it kind of stacks up and it decreases our self-worth or esteem. Now, here's where I do got to put my little, you know, tidbits from my experience and the psychotherapy that I've been studying. We are enough just as we are. Sometimes we fall into this bit of oh, feeling like I just, I need to do more. What else can I accomplish? And once I do that, then I'll be this. But what about just being content and letting yourself know that you are enough just as you are? Ponder that. It feels good to know that you are enough. And tell yourself that. Ponder it, right? Just for a little bit. And then we will go right back into discipline because you need it both. You need that self-love, the affirmation, but you also need to, to get focused. So discipline and environment can go hand in hand. I believe that. So often it's the discipline, discipline that we lack um, by putting ourselves in the right environment, it can really help. So a gambler doesn't want to go to a casino. Well, he's going to struggle, right? Or he, she. And um, I don't have candy in my cabinets or my cupboards because of that. So, you know, I could definitely control myself, but why have the added temptation? Getting it out of there, right? Create the right environment, create that discipline. We all have more motivation and drive and discipline than we realize. Another thing for me is I need to love the space that I'm working in. So sometimes the motivation comes from the space that you're in. I know for me, I need the right lighting. I don't want it to be cluttered. I like to have my uh, face out looking towards the, the door. Or I want my back towards the wall. Certain things, I thrive on natural sunlight. What about you? What do you need in your space to feel inspired? Do you need to feel cozy? Do you not even care? Maybe you're one that can handle the fluorescent lights and you don't need the sunlight. That is awesome, I wish I were you. So think about what you need and how you can kind of really um, take care of yourself and, and make the most out of it to be more disciplined. So often we don't have that perfect situation, right? Or the perfect environment, but we can begin to look at our current reality and see well, what is it in, in it for me right now? What am I learning from this? How can I work with this? How can I make the most out of it? And then go back to, or this goes back to our, you know, quote of the day, be happy in the moment, but pursue your dream. So if you know like, yep, I don't like my current office, but I will sort that out. It applies to so many different situations, right? The present is all we have. And when we think about the past, we're in the present. When we think about the future, we are still in the present. So like yesterday, I mentioned we can consciously create the future. And the best way for me to do this, and I think for all of us, is to really start with gratitude in the present, being grateful for your current situation. Then evaluate, okay, what, what can I get out of this current situation? What do I appreciate about it? Then next, what can you do to improve? And finally, where do you see yourself in the future? So again, take any situation that you want and apply those. So to wrap today's message up in a beautiful little bow, I want to tie in Jim Rohn's words of wisdom. So I will give an example, but of course I want you to think of your current situation because it makes it much more powerful. So what are you planting or what are you searching for? What are you wanting to research and look up? I'll use my podcast example again because it's just fresh in my mind, right? I'll say when I started this journey, it was months ago, it felt very overwhelming. I wasn't sure even where to start especially looking at my current tech savvy skills. I'm not, well, I shouldn't even say that I'm not tech savvy. I'm learning and I'm getting good at it. Um, but I have this little dodgy Mac computer, dodgy mic. I'm not even using it today because I ordered a new one and my other one was just, yesterday's video was very, right? So anyways, all of that is kind of you're preparing and you're tilling, right? And then you plant the seed, which would be my first episode. Planted the seed when I first did that, right? And now I really have to nurture it and pulling out the weeds or anything that comes along and just being patient. So tomorrow's video is going to be on essentialism and I can't wait to talk about it. We are going to focus on the non-essential pursuits that can keep you from where you are and what you wanna do. So what would you do if you could do anything? Is it what you are doing and pursuing? Are you worried about what others think? Sometimes that's very natural. And it's what I will say is, if you are worried about what everyone thinks, it's Hamlet saying that I love. It's like, to thyself be true, right? So 
Until next time, I'm sending you so much love and inspiration, and I thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you again soon. Much love. Bye.